hello, hello, hello. You are tuning into another episode of The Wonder King Show. Today's first topic, the Baltimore Ravens Achilles heel. Look. As a Raven fan, right? You latch on to the mindset that defense will always be good on this team. Lamar Jackson is an absolute stud. And the pedigree of this team is winning. That's what you latch on as a Raven fan. So regardless of what's going on and who even will you pick, once the season starts, we always believe we have a shot. A chance. 90% of the time. We always believe we have a chance. Now, injuries can change that up, but usually we believe we have a chance because we're just a team of fighters. But with that mindset, we overlook certain things. And we let other great things overshadow very big concerns. Points, um, point uh, in case, right? Point in case. Ronnie Stanley. Nobody's been bringing him up all off season. The only time he was brought up was when the Ravens retained him for a much lesser contract. That was it. And in my mind, the way the Ravens sat the, uh, uh, did the draft and everything else, I think they had the, uh, the, uh, the mindset of always keeping Ronnie Stanley, but they just didn't want to pay that price. Here's the thing, and, and this, is a, this is something I've been worried about. For all the hoopla that even I say, the acquisition of Derrick Henry, the second year of Lamar Jackson in this offensive scheme, Zay Flowers no longer being a rookie, Bateman being healthy, Mark Andrews being healthy, likely becoming a viable and explosive target. All of those things will still be good. Heck, we'll probably still be great. But if Ronnie Stanley doesn't play up to par, when the playoffs start, we're going to be in trouble. Look, I don't care what anybody says. Listen, I want you to understand something right now, right? Players don't just get better. Health-wise. This is exactly why I'm, I, mean, I was so concerted in my statements when stating that I wanted to build the offensive line in the draft. Why? Because Ronnie Stanley, that linchpin, if he's not healthy, when the playoffs start, can ruin everything. And if you think I'm playing, if you think I'm joking, go look at pressure rate for quarterbacks from the left side, pertaining the left tackle. Look at all the ones that have won. Look at all the ones that have lost. If you're telling me, well, Lamar can escape, how can you trust and feast off that play after play after play after play after play? Football is about execution. That's why you hear so many people wanting things to be on time, rhythm, passing, you understand where I'm coming from? Rhythm to the play calling. You just can't be like, we're going to call a play. It might not work, but we have an elusive quarterback. He can make anything happen. And if the play breaks down, he'll make it work. That's, you can't, yes, it's a cheat code, but you can't live by it. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because everybody already knows how I felt about the O-line. I heard some people talking about the offensive line. And I didn't like that Ronnie Stanley is not being brought up. Look. I hope he comes back. I hope he's 100%. Do I want to ask y'all this. Do we have a backup plan for Ronnie Stanley if he can't play the whole season? <laughs> Last year, he was a part-timer. People tend to forget these things. He didn't play the whole season. He didn't play a lot of the games. Him, him and another, him and, and Makari were being swapped out for each other. Because he was having trouble making it through an entire game. Now, have I heard any injuries or anything else like that? No. But we didn't hear that last year. Until training camp started. 
<laughs> that's my problem. Look, I want to make sure that I'm not hating. I'm not. Because I know some people are going to be like, Nitro, why are you hating? I'm being honest. I don't need everything to be perfect. I don't think everything has to be perfect for Lamar to win. My thing is, I'm looking at this realistically. We are having a line that is young. The most important person on the line, the left tackle, is often injured. Right? So there's no cohesion. There's no true veteranship. And the true veteran on that on that line is often injured. You tell me if that's not a recipe for something bad. Now look, I'm not I'm listen, I'm not trying to drum up poison or bad. I I'm I, I'm hoping the Ravens are looking into this. Because the Ravens have the propensity to be like, everything's all right, everything's good. The fans will be like, the Ravens think it's good. They say it's good, so everything is great. <laughs> and I, I don't live in that world. I don't. I'm sorry, I, I can't. I have to be honest, even if it's to my detriment. It's, it's just, I... And for anybody saying the Ravens will be fine, blah, 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 y'all said the same thing about Greg Roman. Y'all said the same thing about the wide receivers. You said the same thing about the pass rushers. Like, I don't want to hear y'all, nah, this ain't purple Kool-Aid glasses on my face. I want this team to not just dominate. I want them to win. I want them to win. I need for them to win. If you can't understand that statement, or if that's going over your head, get go! Close to the camera. Why? Because no matter how you try to run from a lie, the truth will always catch up. And the truth of the matter is that defensively, we've hit on a lot of players. It hasn't been the luck offensively. We're still hoping. Let, let's, let's do a quick rundown real quick, right? We're still hoping Bateman turns into a star. We are hoping Ronnie Stanley can stay healthy. We're hoping that Derrick Henry can still run at the level he did at his age and the amount of carries he's done. We are hoping that those young guys can hold up and learn the system. You understand where I'm coming from? Like, it's a lot of wishing and hopes and having faith. And different parts of the offense. Now, mind you, they could go out there. I, I think they're going to be a top offense. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying anything outside of that. What I'm saying is every team has their weaknesses. And the win, a lot of times you have to figure out a creative way to overcome those weaknesses. My problem is if your left tackle becomes unsustainable, how do you overcome that problem if you don't already have a backup plan that's my problem and if anybody says, oh we got Macari <laughs> that's what I'm saying you know what I'm saying it's look I, I love listen I love these type of conversations because I know the Ravens are professional and they're they have to be talking about we've seen the Ravens go into a season with absolutely no receivers and said Bateman one one Bateman who's never been that guy was enough and you guys backed them up for doing that. And then when everything went to, to craps, y'all looking over like, oh, you know. Oh. <laughs> you remember when we got Alejandro feeling in the waiver? I was one of the few. I'm like, bro, y'all trust this dude? He was trash on Pittsburgh. I had Pittsburgh Steelers fans be like, we glad we got rid of him. I'm like, bro, why are y'all putting so much trust in this man? Remember the center problem? Okay. I'm just saying. I don't understand where I'm coming from. So, you know, I'm not tripping. I'm not tripping here. I'm just being realistic. And I'm hoping the Ravens are too. But what do you guys think? What do you guys think the biggest, the biggest Achilles heel for the Ravens are coming for this season? Every team, to be fair, has an Achilles heel. Every team. But what do you specifically think the Ravens' Achilles heels is? And like I said, I think mine is offensive line on left tackle. Let me know what you think down in the comment section, all right? But as always, <gasps> that's episode of the Wonder Kind. Shut up. Thank you for watching. Y'all know how we get down. We have fun and we laugh. But everything we talk about rooted in what? Facts and truth.
Please do remember, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a comment. You know I love the comments. If you have not done so already, check out the one that controls Patreon. Yes, three tiers of content goodness waiting for your consumption. Give it a look, give it a try. Let me know what you think. And if you would like to donate to this channel, help out with equipment and such stuff like that, right? Haha, <laughs> bottom of the screen, QR code, QR codes to a cash app. Cash is located in the description of every video that we do. Name of it is Money Sign, The Wonder Kid Show. Super easy. But once again, this is The Wonder Kid Show. This is your host, Nick, for signing off. And as always, you know my slogan. <gasps> Peace. And I am out of here. Huh? Yeah. Finish him, daddy.